Hey everyone, Margaret here with another tech update. Today we're going to review the Alienware 13. This is Alienware's 2015 laptop edition, utilizing NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture and goes from the starting price of $899.99, increasing in price up to $1,649.99, based on the package you purchase. Let's start with a super quick unboxing. The box is fairly large for a 13-inch laptop, but as you can see, there's a lot of padding, so that's pretty nice. Underneath the laptop are some pamphlets and quick start guides. And when you lift the panel next to the laptop, you'll find the 130-watt AC adapter. It's large, heavy, and very similar to others that you find of its kind. It also has that classic Dell rubber strap, which is great for traveling. The adapter has a nice blue ring light, but sadly doesn't change color with the laptop settings. Also, I found it can become bothersome at nighttime when trying to sleep. When untethered, the battery life is roughly 8.5 hours, depending on what you're doing. It's good for a few hours of gaming or a few movies untethered, but don't expect to be wireless all day with this device. It's got great battery life for a gaming laptop, but it's still a gaming laptop. The laptop itself has that sleek, aggressive look that Alienware always totes. The upper right and left-hand corners are angled off, and the anodized aluminum shell reinforced by magnesium alloy has a soft texture that doesn't leave behind fingerprints. You'll also notice that the speakers are on the left and right sides. I found the clipped speakers to provide a nice loud sound, and the laptop itself to be fairly quiet. On the left side, you'll find your AC adapter jack, lock slot, a USB 3.0 port, separate microphone and headphone jacks, and your left speaker. On the right side, there's your right speaker, two more USB ports, and a gigabit ethernet jack. Finally, on the back you have the exhaust, proprietary PCI Express connector for the Alienware graphics amplifier, mini display port, HDMI 1.4 output, and another exhaust. There are a few display options for the Alienware 13, including a touchscreen choice for $200 more. This one is sporting the 13-inch IPS panel anti-glare 1080p 350 nits display. It's a matte screen, so the reflections aren't too bad, and the viewing angles are pretty good. I did find that the monitor was very flexible due to the material they chose, but it didn't make the laptop feel cheap. The bottom half of the laptop doesn't flex as much, but I think it's due to the sheer thickness of the laptop. And let us go into dimensions and weight from there. The monitor is 13 inches, the laptop itself is 9.252 inches, which is 235 millimeters deep, and 12.913 inches, 328 millimeters wide, with a front height of 1.04 inches, 26.34 millimeters, and rear height of 1.098 inches, 27.9 millimeters, weighing in at 4.537 pounds, or 2.058 kilograms. As with most Alienware products, the Alienware 13 allows you to customize the lighting system for the top, both Alienware symbols, keyboard, and touchpad. With the Command Center 4 Dido, you can also accelerate your system and monitor its performance. At first, I wasn't sure how I'd like the keyboard because the material leaves fingerprints very easily, but when typing, it feels smooth, it's very responsive, and the directional keys are in a great location. The trackpad, on the other hand, I was not impressed with. The buttons are all right, they click reasonably well, but tracking is particularly bad. It skips around, doesn't always pick up movements, and you'll find that your fingerprints will definitely be left behind. Personally, I wish companies would spend a little bit more time on making their trackpads equivalent to the amazing hardware within their laptops. Also, I still would highly recommend getting an external mouse for gaming as the location of the trackpad may make it awkward when utilizing both the keyboard and trackpad for interactive gameplay. As far as cooling, both the CPU and GPU stayed below 85 degrees Celsius during intense stress testing. The laptop has some hot spots near the ventilation at the bottom, so it's not something you want on your lap for more than a few minutes. I will say I like the nice little stoppers at the bottom of the laptop, which allow for more ventilation room whenever you have the laptop on a flat surface. Also, if you remove these two screws here, you can easily replace your RAM and hard drive. Now let's get into the system specs. This Alienware 13 comes with an Intel Core i7-5500U processor, dual core 4 megabyte cache up to 3.0 gigahertz with turbo boost. This is plenty for most gamers, but gets crushed under more demanding CPU tasks. The NVIDIA GTX 960M, this is nice paired with the CPU, as any higher GPU would run into bottleneck issues. The Samsung SSD PM851 M2 256GB hard drive is used for storage. Samsung SSDs are great products, and it's nice to see one included in this build. The drive may be slightly older, but it uses the new M2 form factor for improved speed and reduced size. If you require a bit more media storage, you may want to add additional storage. The 229GB usable should be fine for most gamers, though. The killer network interface card provides effective bandwidth control, low ping, 
and the Samsung 16 gigabyte to 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR3 1600 will be good enough for you, but it leaves enough room for future RAM upgrades if you wish. We're using the Windows 8.1, but you can choose between 8.1 or Windows 7 Professional when purchasing the product. As with most Windows and 8.7 users, you'll be able to upgrade to Windows 10 for free when it's available later this year. Now let's get into the part that I love the most, the nitty gritty performance tests. You'll want to do these tests on whatever device you want to compare the Alienware 13 to. I'll leave the test settings down in the description below for you all. Now I ran each test three times to get an average. For gaming and intensive GPU testing, I utilized 3 Mark, Tomb Raider, Resident Evil 5, and Dragon Age Inquisition. The Tomb Raider benchmark on Ultra presets simulates a graphically demanding modern game. The Alienware 13 delivered an acceptable frame rate between 32 and 60 FPS, sufficient for single player or lower motion games. The Resident Evil 5 test simulates a slightly older game run fully maxed out. It performs well and delivered between 75 and 90 FPS at all times, making it sufficiently fast for all gaming experiences, including competitive. For Dragon Age Inquisition, I turned everything all the way up. Dragon Age Inquisition was released in late 2014 and has a high level of graphic fidelity when configured. I wanted to push the laptop past its comfort zone with this test, and I succeeded to do so. The laptop is certainly capable when the graphics are configured smartly, but when everything is turned up across the board, the Alienware 13 couldn't really keep up. 3D Mark is a great performance benchmark, having an assortment of tests that shows how well the system performs in all types of games. Here, the 13 delivers great results up until the ultra-demanding Firestrike benchmark. In conclusion, looking at all of these gaming and GPU intensive test data, this is where the laptop really shined. With a little bit of tweaking, you will easily be able to get favorable performance on medium to high settings in about any game. Now, for overall performance testing, CPU, GPU, and memory, I use the Passmark and PCMark 8 test. The Passmark performance test is a good overall system benchmark outside of gaming. The 13 delivers good graphics scores as well as excellent memory and disk scores, but the CPU mark is below average. PCMark 8 is another general performance test useful for measuring system performance outside of gaming. Here, the system performs well. The scores are somewhat reduced due to the CPU struggling during encoding tasks found in these tests. Overall, tests where it uses moderate to heavy GPU usage, the Alienware 13 performs really well, but during moderate to heavy CPU usage, it functioned poorly. For general gaming, which is heavy GPU and modest CPU usage, it performs very well and compares to a high-end gaming laptop from two years ago, but packed into a slimmer, lighter product. For a GPU accelerated video encoding test, I used R15. The Alienware 13 performs well, better than many desktop setups, but has a relatively low CPU encoding score. For example, a high-end desktop PC with an i7-5960X would perform four times better in the CPU encoding segment. For hard disk performances, we tested different transfer sizes and QDEFs by using Crystal Disk Mark 3.04 x64 and Addo Disk Benchmark tests. What these tests show us is that the Alienware 13 gives very good medium to high-end SSD performance, and if this isn't fast enough for you, the super fast M2 drives like the Samsung NVMe SSDs are available on the market for you to upgrade to. To sum this all up, the Alienware 13 is compact, provides a good mid-range laptop experience, and allows you to play modern games at medium to high graphical setting. I think this product is for someone who is on the go and wants a portable way to keep their gaming experience at its peak. If you still have any questions about the performance of the laptop, drop them down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them as fast as I can. If you enjoyed this review, remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see me review more products in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel below. Margaret signing off. As always, enjoy the game.